Welcome back to YouTube. I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews. And in today's video, I will put Google's Tensor chip under stress to see how far it can go. And I will compare it against the A14 Bionic in my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I know you expect this comparison to be with the 13 Pro Max, but this is the closest flagship from Apple that you can get right now for $899, which is the same price of the Pixel 6 Pro, if not even higher. Anyways, this test will include the heaviest tasks you can do on a smartphone to compare the speed, temperature, and battery consumption. For the sake of fairness, I will turn off the 120Hz refresh rate on the Pixel 6 Pro to match the 12 Pro Max's 60Hz display. Calibrate the screen brightness on both, no SIM card used in any of them, do not disturb is activated, both connected to the same Wi-Fi network, both are running the latest stable software versions available at the time of filming this video, no apps running in the background, even the storage is the same 128 GB. The batteries are charged to 100% and the iPhone battery health is also at 100%. And now let's begin. Test number one will be a Zoom meeting with the screen sharing enabled and I will play Modern Combat 5 for one hour. This might sound like an unusual scenario, but trust me, I always do this with my son. And when I used to do this with my Pixel 5 rocking a mid-range Snapdragon 765G, the experience was far from convenient 100% of the time. The phone becomes very slow, laggy, and noticeably warm with a huge amount of battery drain. So I hope Tensor will deliver a better experience considering that Google now owns the hardware and software. Back to the test and after 30 minutes of continuous playing, both phones were noticeably warm, but to be precise, the temperatures were 36 degrees Celsius for the 6 Pro and almost 41 degrees for the 12 Pro Max, which is a big difference considering that the 6 Pro has a higher resolution and bigger display. When it comes to the battery, the 6 Pro is also ahead, losing only 3% versus 6% on the 12 Pro Max. We still have another 30 minutes to go, so let's see if things will change. After the second 30 minutes, the 6 Pro reached 39 degrees Celsius and the 12 Pro Max was slightly higher at 40 something. The 6 Pro consumed only 11% battery for the whole hour and the 12 Pro Max consumed 15%, which is a 4% difference. Right after the test, the performance on both was pretty good. I didn't notice any lag or slower animations. So in this test, the win goes to the 6 Pro for better thermal handling and battery consumption. Now let's move on to test number two. Here I will keep taking back-to-back -back photos on both for 30 minutes and then record a 30 minutes 4K video to compare which one is better in handling those heavy tasks without any thermal warnings. The same conditions mentioned before apply here, but in this test I turned off Wi-Fi to stop any of them from backing up photos or videos to the cloud. And the battery percentages are 85 on the 12 Pro Max and 89 on the 6 Pro, which is the remaining battery after the previous test. I used the third-party app on the Pixel to keep hitting the shutter key continuously for 30 minutes and used the switch control accessibility feature on the iPhone to do the same, so let's start with the photos. And instead of using the main sensor in this test, I used the ultra-wide lens as both are rocking a 12 megapixel sensor, which is the best match in this scenario. Right off the bat, the iPhone is much faster. Every three to four photos, the Pixel takes only one. But after 17 minutes, the camera app on the 12 Pro Max crashed and the temperature reached 43.4 degrees. The 6 Pro was almost the same at 43 degrees exactly, but the camera didn't stop. I was struggling to stop the switch control on the iPhone and after three minutes of trying, I'm finally back to the camera app. But I got a thermal warning saying flash is disabled and the iPhone needs to cool down. I ignored the message and started switch control again to finish the round. After 30 minutes, the iPhone temperature was so high reaching 46.8 degrees. On the other hand, the Pixel 6 was at 44.1. The 12 Pro Max battery went down from 85 to 73, which is a 12% difference. And the 6 Pro was slightly behind, losing 13%. So let's take a look at the photos count. The 6 Pro at first showed 719 photos, but it was loading more. So I kept it aside for now. The 12 Pro Max took a whopping 2,907 photos, which is insane. Getting back to the Pixel after a couple of minutes and the total number was 819, which is 3.6 times less than the iPhone. Yes, the iPhone got a thermal warning during the test, but it did a lot more compared to the Pixel with less battery consumption. So the win goes to the 12 Pro Max in the photos part, hands down. Now let's move on to the video recording. This test was a bit of a challenge because the 12 Pro Max can record the 10-bit HDR video while the Pixel 6 Pro is using a new feature called HDR Net. I couldn't find anything that relates between the two and which one requires more processing power, plus there is no option on the 6 Pro to turn off the HDR Net. 
So I choose to do the test with the 10 bit enabled on the iPhone, and in this case, its display becomes brighter, which is something I couldn't control using the brightness slider. So I kept everything as it is and continued with the test. After 22 minutes, the 6 Pro stopped recording because of overheating, but after measuring the temperature, it was only 39.6 degrees. In the photos test, it reached 44 degrees without a thermal warning, so I'm not sure why it decided to stop at this stage. So I gave it some time to cool down. In contrast, the iPhone didn't stop, and after 25 minutes, its temperature was 42.8 degrees. After 3 minutes, the Pixel got enough time to cool down and started to record again. But 2 minutes later, it stopped once more for the same reason, and the temperature was 43.3 degrees. So I had to give it more time to cool down. The iPhone finished the 30 minutes without any hookups and the last temperature reading was 40.5 degrees. The 6 Pro couldn't exceed 22 minutes of continuous recording and the temperature ranged between 39.6 to 43.3 which is higher than the 12 Pro Max. Lastly, the battery consumption was 12% on the iPhone and 14% on the Pixel which is another win for the 12 Pro Max. So overall, in the photo and video test, the win goes to the A14 Bionic for being a lot more efficient than Google Tensor. Test number three will be a traditional speed test to see which one can load apps and games faster. The battery percentages are 61% on the 12 Pro Max and 62 on the 6 Pro. Here I have five games and five apps, so let's begin. Starting with the games, the iPhone opened all of them faster than the 6 Pro, but the margin was very minor. So here's the difference in normal speed. Asphalt 9, 1.5 second. Flip dive, less than a second. Need for speed, no limits, 3 seconds. PUBG, new state, less than a second. And Shadow Fight Arena, 2 seconds. We need to also consider the difference in the pixel density between the two displays. The 12 Pro Max has 458 pixels per inch, while the 6 Pro has 512, which is 12% more pixels. So the difference in speed is justifiable, but it depends on your own judgment. Would you consider it a draw because of the high resolution of the 6 Pro, or you still consider the iPhone to be faster? For me, I will call it a draw because the higher resolution will give me a better experience and the difference is very minor. And now let's try the apps. In Facebook, the posts and the stories loaded at the same time, while the iPhone took 2 seconds more to load my profile picture. In Instagram, the pixel loaded the likes first, then the posts, while the iPhone did the opposite. But both were fully loaded at the same time, so I will call it a draw. Waze was faster on the iPhone by half a second, LinkedIn was faster on the 6 Pro by half a second, and finally Netflix loaded 2 seconds faster on the Pixel, maybe because of the longer animations on the iOS version, but the iPhone was a tad faster in loading the movies, so I will call it a draw as well. When it comes to the RAM management, both kept everything loaded in the background without a refresh, except for need for speed no limits, it took some time to reconnect to the server on both. Finally, let's take a look at the battery. After the test, the iPhone stayed at 61%, while the 6 Pro lost 2% to finish the same tasks, so if we're gonna put everything together, Together, the A14 Bionic proved once more to be more efficient without sacrificing speed and it should be the winner in this test as well. Test number 4 is the last one I have. At first, the battery percentages were 61% on the iPhone and 60% on the Pixel. In this test, I will play a YouTube video in the picture-in-picture -picture mode. The video resolution was set to 720p because this is the maximum I was able to get on the iPhone using Safari. Then I will keep scrolling in Facebook at the same time for 30 minutes. Again, I will use a third-party app on the 6 Pro to automate the process and switch control on the 12 Pro Max. After 2 minutes and 20 seconds, the iPhone decreased the display brightness automatically and the brightness slider didn't make any difference. So I decreased the brightness on the 6 Pro to match the iPhone and continued with the test. During the test, the iPhone started to lag a bit, while the 6 Pro was smoother the whole time, even with the 120Hz turned off. After the 30 minutes, the 12 Pro Max temperature was 43.5 and the 6 Pro was better at 41.2 degrees Celsius, when it comes to the battery, the iPhone lost 10% while the 6 Pro lost only 9. So the win goes to the 6 Pro for multiple reasons. First, the temperature was better even though the iPhone dimmed the display to keep the temperature under control, but this didn't help it to win the Pixel. 
it consumed less battery percentage and the scrolling didn't lag throughout the entire test. After these comparisons, my conclusion is Google Stencil is better in handling multiple apps and tasks at the same time more efficiently, like we saw in the first and last tests. While the A14 Bionic is better in tasks that require a lot of processing power, like recording high resolution videos. And I can relate this finding to what Google mentioned in the Pixel 6 launch event, Monica Gupta, the product manager, talked about how good is Google Stencil in heterogeneous computing, or in other words, it's optimized for handling multiple complex tasks at the same time more efficiently. And for me, that matches the outcome of this comparison. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my test for Google Stencil and how it's compared against Apple's A14 Bionic chip. So I hope you like my video, and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.